Hey everybody, this is Greg aka Crazy G from Crazy G in the G Spot and NECR New England Concert Reviews and I am back at it once again doing the interview thing. I have an incredible artist on the phone right now. He plays the flute, rhythm, guitar and saxophone and his name is Tom Gimbel from the band Foreigner. Hello, welcome, and thanks for taking the time to chat with us here at NECR. What's going on? And oh, how, hey, Greg. How are you? Doing great, thanks. We were, uh, we're doing shows at summertime, and uh, we're headed for New England, so that's a perfect place to be in the summer, and we're looking forward to it. It's hot right now, so if you're doing any shows over this weekend up in the Northeast, you better stay cool, man, because I'll tell you, it's brutal out there. As I was doing some research on you, I noticed that professionally, You've attained a list of very impressive accomplishments. Can you tell us a little bit about your musical background? Yeah, I started as a kid uh, always singing, probably. And my parents, if we went to a wedding or something, they would have me sing with the band. Even when I was a tiny little kid, they did that thing where you stand on a chair and you sing with the band. So that's really how I got started. Then I loved Elvis and everything, and the Beatles, and then the Who, and especially Cream. When Cream came out, I just loved the sound of that Clapton guitar. And so many of their songs were a really big influence on me. Uh, so that led to Chicago and funk bands along the way. Like, I lo always loved Motown, especially uh, James Brown with the horns and any of the band that had horns in them. Uh, Stevie Wonder was a, a huge favorite of mine, and so many of them. Uh, the bands that were on the radio in those days, you know, are a huge influence. That's what we grew up with. Whatever was on the radio was really getting into our minds. And so uh, I just loved it all. All the Beatles and the Who, and then of course uh, the psychedelic era came in with Yes and Emerson, Lake and Palmer, and all this great stuff. And then I started to get into jazz and so forth. But I really, my heart was in rock music, and um, I went to Boston to study jazz, which I also love. And uh, while I was there, I, I started playing in band and putting together rock bands, and uh, that was what led me to playing in the clubs. And uh, through working in in that world, I met John Butcher and started working with John Butcher and uh, we went to California and made three albums on Capitol Records. A uh, fantastic learning experience um, working with Glenn Ballard, the producer, and so forth. But uh, through my connection with John Butcher, I was recommended to Aerosmith and started working with those guys in 1989 uh, for the Pump Tour. And that was just, it was incredible. And uh, finished that tour and then Foreigner called me and I started working with them in 1992. So I've just been really, really fortunate. Uh, uh, I feel grateful and honored to have worked with such fantastic artists over the years and uh, right up to this day we are touring uh, making new CDs and DVDs for Foreigner so uh, we're looking forward to, to being in Hampton Beach uh, you were saying how to stay cool that's right on the ocean there and afterwards we're going up to Maine uh, into the lakes and so that's another good way to cool down uh, two good ways going to Maine is a lot cooler and jumping in a lake is even cooler than that so uh, that's <laughs> right up to this moment what's been going on with me and you know uh, I gotta agree with you that the psychedelic era I grew up on all that stuff and you know oh, we, we'll never get it again I don't think not in my lifetime no. anyways you know no I was a drummer yeah I was a drummer in Inagata De Vida remember that was a huge deal every kid was playing that on the drums oh you're not kidding and so many great talented musicians came out of those years and it's just it, it's mind boggling to try to compare that time with now now and it, it was just so many it, it's funny because although you know i'm into the more heavier stuff i still listen to i was listening to cream yesterday videos too greg yeah the videos you can see them live back in those days I uh, on youtube it's incredible oh yeah <laughs> that's no lie when you're, you're saying that so for all the younger ones out there you really missed something try to look up some of these bands but uh if you like that sound yeah uh, definitely foreign obviously is currently where you're at. Briefly, can you tell us how this relationship came about? Mm -hmm. I'd been working with Aerosmith, and so a, a friend of mine was playing golf with a guy from Atlantic Records, and 
they said foreigner needs a guitar player that can also play the sax on urgent it's kind of tough to find and my friend said oh i got a guy for you and he gave him my phone number back in those days we had to have a phone number and they called me up and they said well if it uh, i mean we know that you can play music and everything we've seen like videos <laughs> but uh, it's like joining a family you know we're curious to know what kind of person you are so they said Let, let's go to dinner hang out Nick and lou and uh so we went out and we had a great time and they said all right let's go on the road so I, I i just i can't say enough great things about them uh lou is he's funny in a, a very new york upstate sort of way and of course nick uh, british humor is, is always uh just kind of it's refreshing you know because it's so different for us uh um, north americans uh, yeah. <laughs> we had a great time and i've been working with them ever since yeah you're not kidding on that one either <laughs> <laughs> uh. it's so unexpected yeah it's so unexpected i know monty python one of my favorite favorites, the young ones. Uh -huh absolutely fabulous you know what i mean uh yeah, yeah. So, so i i like that type of humor myself foreigner has just put out an in concert unplugged i was wondering if you could tell us anything about this cd and or dvd yeah I, we worked on this it's an acoustic show really and uh we worked on it this summer it was so or last summer it was so much fun to do the songs in this fashion you know with these wonderful sounding plucked guitar guitars and some mandolin and some slide guitar and uh, our piano player Michael Blue on piano it is and you can really hear the harmonies a lot of singing a lot of layered vocals we were so fortunate to have all these great singers in this band so uh, we could really focus on that you know without so much volume it's a lot easier to hear the vocals and to really concentrate in there and I got to play sax on a song like uh, Cold as Ice which is unique you know and it's just a lot of fun experience Experiments and the people seem to love them, which is why we said, "Oh, we gotta, we gotta record it and uh, make a little CD or DVD here." So that's pretty much what's in there. But it, it's the bulk of a lot of the songs that uh, people expect to hear from Foreigner, and, and some other ones that they might not ordinarily hear in a live concert setting. So it's a lot of fun overall, and it's also got a, a nice, fresh way of looking at these songs. That's incredible. There are so many great hits throughout the years. What are a few of your favorites, and why? Yeah, as far as the Foreigner hits. Songs. There's, uh, you're right. There are so many. I love all the songs that we're doing, and uh, so I, I would say if we had to pick some of the favorites, there aren't any real order. But uh, I always love playing Double Vision because it's such a cool guitar riff. You know, that opening riff is so needy. And uh, Two Box Hero, same thing. Those big giant power chords. It, uh, it's it's power. You know, that's what I love about uh, traditional rock music. You play that guitar, you feel like you could knock down a wall. So with a big drum set it's a very powerful kind of music and i love that you know it's like a v12 truck engine in a little car in a corvette or something you know we have this incredible singing with kelly hansen and uh so those songs it feels like the first time but i also love the songs like waiting for a girl like you and uh i want to know what love is so there's a lot of broad range of different sounding songs in, in our in our set but um we do an acoustic version of say you will that has a nice uh, kind of echo flute intro kind of spacey sounding stuff which i always like atmospheric you know oh yeah and, uh, of course hot blooded oh greg you, you have no idea how much fun it is to play hot blooded on guitar it's just <laughs> rocking you know <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Same with a long long way from home on the sax that's amazing it really really is you know let's be honest everybody has a favorite foreigner song what is it like playing the favorites before the fans and actually seeing them and hearing them singing along to the lyrics it's it's the way it should be you know it's like a concert that means people are joining together and I, I love when people are singing with us clapping dancing however they're enjoying the music uh, and especially when we get to urgent and I'm, I'm wailing on that saxophone it's great to see the, the people that are just like it's like they know what's supposed to happen you know with that sax and I'm just lucky enough to deliver it and then uh, we do it the way it is on the album and then we go into a different key and I get to do my own stuff and just kind of lose my mind basically and uh then i wake up afterwards it's like kind of like blanking out for a while there and it's just pure adrenaline just good times rocking song that, that makes your feet and your legs want to move ah, yeah 
Oh, I'll tell you. Back in the day when some of these songs, it's funny because I can remember partying all the time and you wouldn't realize how many foreigner songs came over the radio. And there, there were quite a uh -huh. few. There were quite a few of them. Yeah, but, it's true. And, and it was a good part of the, of the party world was to put on that kind of rock music. And it, yeah, that's like, a, it's what it's just a part of what it's designed for. It's, it's also good driving music in the car. They always crank it in the car. And still to this day, we, we've done some live DVDs and people, or CDs, and people say, man, in the car, that thing is rocking, it's pumping. Oh, yeah. It's nice to know the world hasn't changed that much. It's just a CD instead of an eight track. I, exactly. Oh, man. Now you're really, you now you're really going back. As a matter of fact, I think I got some eight tracks laying around here. <laughs> yeah, they're still around. I mean, 78s are still around. I have my parents' 78s, so eight tracks aren't even that old by comparison. Oh, well, yeah. They I sound good. I found a bunch of 78s, uh, quite a few of them. Some Credence. Yeah, so some, some pretty cool stuff, man. It brings you back. What was it like playing with Nate Roos on ABC's Greatest Hits? It was fantastic. He was so cool, and he would come in, and he was really complimentary. You could tell he understood the song. He knew what it was about, and the way he sang it, with he sang it with real heart and soul. I don't know, do you remember seeing him, the way he delivered it? It was heartfelt, you know, and uh, that's, that's the real stuff. That's probably why an artist like Nate would rise the way he has. That's the real talent. That's the real artistry, and it was a pleasure and an honor for us to uh, have him come up and join us on that one. That's that's totally awesome. As you mentioned okay. earlier, the Hampton Beach show, that's part of two shows coming up here in the Northeast. One at Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom in New Hampshire, and one at the Grand Theater at Foxwoods in Connecticut. What can the fans expect to see from these two shows? It's a good rockin' show. It, it's the traditional rock values I talk about. And uh, loud guitars, great songs, Kelly Hansen front in the band, and just it's a lot of the songs that people know and recognize so that that makes it fun you know if you want to join and uh our our singer kelly he really insists that people get involved you know it's not sit back and watch the band he wants people to stand up and stomp their feet and clap their hands and sing along which ultimately is actually more fun uh you know even though <laughs> some people are shy they might not feel like it he will demand it <laughs> it's like you have a good time whether you want to or not that kind of situation <laughs> right and, and you lot of fun. You get the, the crowd, you know, you get them involved, and I, I think that right. you know, I think it becomes more personal it's that way. It's that kind of show. Yeah, sure, there are different styles and different techniques. That just happens to be his style, our style. We want to be involved with the audience. We don't block them out. We want to bring them in. No, makes perfect sense. Tom, before we let you go, kind of like a three-part question for the end here. Is there anything you can tell us that might be in the works for Foreigner in the future? Any potential for writing and anything we may not know about? There may, there may, can you still hear me? Yeah. There may uh, be some new, a uh, couple of songs that might uh, find their way out in the next year or so. Uh, and as far as the other top secret stuff for next year, you know, I we don't have security clearance to talk about that. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey. There uh, may be some great stuff cooking up because next year's the 40th reunion. The band originally started in 1977, so next year will be the 40th. Uh, so no. I almost said reunion, but I meant uh, anniversary. And so we're just going to wait and see. There, there's been, yeah, there, I mean, they've publicly talked about possible uh, reuniting uh, for a little bit here, a little bit there. And um, there is some, some new material that I think will probably find its way out. So we're just going to have to wait and see, but it won't be long. This year is wide down, it'll be 2017 before we know it. Doesn't it fly? Yeah. Unbelievable. Kind of, as long as we can hang on, it's fun. <laughs> You're not kidding there either. <laughs> well, I know. Well, listen, Tom, everybody, Tom Gimbel, flute, rhythm, guitar, saxophone for the band Foreigner. I want to thank you. It's been an honor and a pleasure to sit here oh, and speak you. with you and uh, pick your brain a little bit. I wish you the best with Foreigner. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Mr. G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great talking with you. You too, man. Peace. Take care, man.
Tom Gimbel, flute, rhythm, guitar, and saxophone from the band Foreigner. And this is Greg, a.k.a. Crazy G, from Crazy G in the G Spot, and NECR New England Concert Reviews. That's going to wrap this one up, and I'll be back. Have a good one. Later.